Sun and various forms of life were first created by the powerful beings known as the Celestials, and the cosmos was expanding quickly. But one day, a predatory race not of this world known as Deviants appears from the depths of space and starts destroying everything in their path. The Eternals are a race of immortal superhumans that the Celestials commander Erisham transports to Earth and their ship, the Domo, from the planet Olympia. A group of people were out fishing in Mesopotamia in the year 5000 BC, when suddenly Deviants sprang from the sea and attacked them. The Eternals appear at that precise moment to protect them with their abilities. Icarus uses his eye beams and flies to battle the animals, and Makari uses her super speed to push the people aside. While Thena and Gilgamesh summon energy weapons to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat, Kingo fires energy blasts to attack from a distance. Both Sprite and Fastos offer support through their illusions and cutting-edge innovations, respectively. A furious struggle unfolds, but because to the Eternals' outstanding cooperation, the Deviants are soon vanquished, and team leader Ajak treats any wounds they sustained in combat. The humans try to assault them because they are afraid of them, but Droog utilizes his mind control abilities to instantly calm them down. Then Cersei turns a crude knife into real fine metal, as evidence that they are here to aid humanity. The Eternals continue to dwell in the present while feigning normalcy among humans. When Cersei arrives in the London classroom where she is scheduled to lecture, she discovers that her boyfriend Dane is standing in for her. Cersei instructs her students to take shelter under the tables, as a strong earthquake suddenly interrupts the lecture. She then intervenes to save some falling debris from crushing a student. A dog in the nearby river notices a deviant emerge from it. Cersei later hosts a small gathering of friends to celebrate Dane's birthday in the evening. Since the illusion is destroyed if someone touches her, Sprite quickly quits up trying to make herself appear older and hide the fact that she only ages mentally. Cersei declines Dane's request for her to move in with him and Dane starts to worry if she's hiding something as Sprite frequently makes strange remarks. After the celebration, the group starts to walk home when suddenly a giant deviant named Crow attacks them. Cersei tries her abilities to embed it, but Crow quickly breaks apart and flees into the streets. To confuse the monster, Sprite creates an illusion that duplicates her and Cersei, but Crow surprises them by being able to identify who the actual ones are something deviants could never achieve. Sprite is about to be killed by Crow until Icarus appears and saves her. She then goes on to face the deviant head-on. As a result of their conflict, a bus flips, and Cersei hastily turns into rose petals to stop a collision. It is even more shocking to all when Crow reveals that it has the ability to heal itself, but it is still obvious that Icarus has the upper hand and escapes into the river. Dane then asks Cersei why she never offered assistance through the world's worst catastrophes, after she reveals the truth about her identity to him. According to Cersei, they were told to never question the decisions of mankind in order to prevent impeding their progress as a civilization. They were instructed to remain on Earth until it was time to return home after eliminating the deviants. She also admits to Dane that she and Icarus were married for eons, but that their relationship failed. After coming to the conclusion that the earthquake and the deviant are related, she later returns to her flat to talk about the problem with Sprite and Icarus. They then concur that the team needs to reassemble. This makes me think of Babylon around 575 BC. Under the direction of the Eternals, who repel any attempts at an attack by the Deviants, humanity is progressing. Every time they appear, they are brutal and savage, yet the Eternals battle in unison to dispatch them quickly and painlessly. After one particularly bloody combat, Ajak forms a relationship with Erisham using her unique power stone. She acknowledges her admiration for his ambitious idea, but is opposed to what it would imply for people. She is advised by Erisham to carry out the plan and not to become connected to them. Ajak then returns to the lair where the Eternals are dwelling in plain sight. Sprite utilizes her abilities to enchant children with tales that come to life through her illusions, while Fastos creates a steam engine to sustain mankind. Icarus and Cersei spend time together in the interim and confess their feelings for one another in front of the breathtaking beauty of Earth. They marry in the Gupta Empire many years later. When Cersei, Sprite, and Icarus visit Ajax's ranch in South Dakota in the present, they discover that she has passed away outside her house. Sprite sobs and creates an illusion to remember her, concluding that Crow killed Ajax by stealing her powers which is how it was able to cure itself. The stone in Ajax's flesh that the Celestials gave to her emerges when Cersei approaches the body to express her grief and clings to her. She sees Erisham saying, it is almost time for a split second, before losing sight of him as a result. Icarus is concerned that it might be Mod Weary despite Sprite pointing out that Ajax has picked Cersei to be her successor. This reminds me of something else. The squad was battling the planet's final deviance in Tenochtitlan in 1521 AD. Humans are at war in the meantime, but Ajax won't allow Droog to put an end to it. Thena suddenly feels ill and declares that it is already too late for everyone will soon pass away. Because of the element of surprise, her eyes shift, and she starts assaulting her pals, injuring a number of them. Ajax allows her to hurt her on purpose, 
so that she can approach and use her powers to free her mind of this odd instinctive response. Gilgamesh steps up and engages Thena in combat until he is able to knock her out. Thena continues to attack her. It is later discovered that Thena has Mod Wirai, a condition brought on by her ancient memories converging on themselves and driving her insane. This is revealed when Thena wakes up without remembering what transpired. The only option to make her better would be to entirely delete her mind so that she could start anew. Ajak believes that this is the wisest course of action for the sake of safety. The others rage at Ajak, doubting her leadership because they don't want to lose the Thena they love. He suddenly uses his powers to end the battle, since he is sick of watching humans kill one another without interfering. He then sets out on his own, warning that the only way to stop him would be to kill him. When Gilgamesh says he can take care of Thena, Ajak agrees to let everyone move in with humans, while they wait for the call from home. They may now focus on finding their own purpose, since the deviants are already over. Rewinding to the present, Circe, Sprite, and Icarus head to Mumbai in search of Kingo, who has since become a renowned Bollywood star. Karen, his valet, has been working with him for decades and is aware of his secret. When the group explains what is happening to Kingo, he initially objects and says he prefers his current way of life. Karen persuades Kingo to act as the hero everyone admires, and Karen even agrees to go along and tape the entire ordeal in a documentary style. After traveling to Australia on Kingo's private plane, Sprite complains to him about leaving her for fame, but Kingo responds by saying Sprite's stories inspired him to pursue acting which is why he is an actor today. The squad in Australia locates Thena and Gilgamesh in their country home, after following a trail of dead deviants. As soon as Sprite realizes Karen is filming, she breaks the camera while still appreciating the sincerity. Icarus jealously observes as Circe contacts Dane to check on him, prompting Circe to inquire as to why he left her. Icarus is ready to explain himself when Crow appears out of nowhere and snatches him away. The Eternals act right away when more deviants attack the town. Circe fortifies a structure to conceal the people within before tossing a number of trees onto the deviants. Circe instantly orders Droog to stop and bring the humans to safety, while he attempts to command them as one cohesive force. Kingo charges his beam for a brief while before blowing off the head of a deviant to end its life. When Crow slams Icarus into the ground to absorb his powers, Icarus fights back. Then, as Gilgamesh approaches to confront him, Thena once more succumbs to her madness and strikes Icarus. Gilgamesh observes and moves away in order to approach Thena and soothe her successfully calming her down. Then Icarus pursues a flying deviant, forces it to land in the settlement, and uses his eye beams to kill a large number of the inhabitants. When one of them surprises him from behind, Circe intervenes, shocking everyone by successfully turning the deviant into a tree, something she had never been able to accomplish before. While Gilgamesh is still engaged in combat with Crow, Crow kills him and steals his powers, because he is preoccupied with keeping an eye on Thena. Then Crow transforms, taking on a more human appearance and speaking English. Crow accuses the Eternals of murder, but when Icarus arrives to refute him, Crow flees. Then, after imploring Thena to always remember, Gilgamesh rushes to her sight and passes away in her arms. Gilgamesh's body is later burned, and Thena scatters his ashes into the river. Droog accepts to take part in the task, after seeing that controlling everyone would make him no better than a deviant, but his power isn't powerful enough to control a celestial, so they'll need to track down Fastos. Another memory is of Hiroshima in 1945, shortly after the atomic bomb was dropped. Fasto stood in the aftermath of the blast sobbing to a jack and feeling guilty for advancing human technology while they continue to kill one another. Here is where he chooses to give up on humanity and loses trust in it. Back in the present, when the team lands in Chicago, they are startled to learn that Fastos resides in a suburban home with her husband and son. After hearing the tale, Fastos adds that although her husband has recovered his confidence in people, he still refuses to leave his family behind in favor of a perilous mission. Droog notes that Cersei was able to change a deviant into a tree. Therefore the squad needs a new strategy to make up for the missing members. Cersei, who doesn't understand why Ajak chose her, is still unsure. But Thena explains that a leader protects those they love, and that Ajak was aware of Cersei's devotion for humanity from the beginning. Cersei, who is prepared to fight, gives Fastos permission to remove the special stone from her body and use it to fuel the Unimind. Icarus instructs Sprite to guard the emergence while he breaks into the ship, as the Eternals sail to the volcano. In order to keep him preoccupied while the others activate the Unimind and deactivate the volcano, Thena starts attacking him. Icarus rushes to halt them, killing Droog with his eye beams before striking the spacecraft to cause it to crash. Makari is enraged and starts a violent battle with Icarus as the volcano behind them explodes to start the emergence. Circe rushes up the volcano to see if she can do anything, and Thena and Gilgamesh team up with Makari to fight Icarus. However, they are unable to defeat him since he is too strong, even with their combined efforts. 
Crow shows in at that very moment and joins the battle as well, focusing on Icarus. However, the others attack it first, because they don't want it to grow more powerful. Thena kicks him, knocking him into a cave, where Makari captures him in a dirt whirlwind. Icarus tries to pursue Cersei using the diversion, but Fastos captures him using a unique trap that he created, keeping him on the ground. Crow tricks Thena's mind within the cave by speaking in Gilgamesh's voice, causing her to let her guard down. Thena awakens to destroy it, as soon as it unintentionally quotes Gilgamesh's remember, just as it is about to absorb her abilities. Cersei is astonished to see a jack at the volcano's summit before being violently stabbed. Sprite, who has always been envious of Cersei for getting to live an adult life, had created the illusion of a jack. As she gets about to use her talents to speed up the emergence, Druga appears and knocks her unconscious. As time it emerges from the volcano, the earth begins to tremble and the sea erupts. Icarus escapes from Fasto's trap and pursues Cersei. Well, Cersei stands on top of him and uses her powers to try to stop him. However, upon seeing the woman, he is overcome with memories and finds it difficult to kill her. Cersei takes advantage of the opportunity to activate the Unimind, which gives her the power to increase her abilities and reduce Tiamat to the size of a massive rock statue. Icarus goes to space after repenting in tears and admitting his error where the sun scorches him to match the legend associated with his name. Sprite is heartbroken to learn that he is no longer with her, but Cersei still has some power from the Unimin, so she makes use of it to remove Sprite's immortality, so that she can lead a regular human life. When their goal is finished, once more splitting up the Eternals, Thena goes in search of further Eternals with Makari and Droog on the Domo. While Fastos returns home to his family, Sprite enlists in a boarding school, and Kingo resumes his filmmaking. Dane welcomes Cersei back and accepts her for who she is. Cersei, Kingo, and Fastos are suddenly called by the Skyborn Arisham. He tells them that he would remove them for judgment, because he knows they betrayed them. 